Hey guys, this is Charlotte, and you're watching Going In Raw. What's up, it's your girl Sasha Banks, legit boss, and you are watching Going In Raw. You like that? What's up? This is the most must-see WWE superstar of all time, and his lovely, gorgeous wife, Marie. <laughs> and you are going in SmackDown Live. This is the glorious one, Bobby Roode, and you're watching Going In Raw. Hey, Brendo, Steve here. And Larson. Hey, welcome back to Going In Raw. It's the only pro wrestling podcast you need to be listening to. Hey, there's a lot of great ones out there. I'm going to name one right now. Wrestle Ramble. I oh. like the guys from Wrestle Talk. I think they're very charming. Mm -hmm. That's another great one. But this is the only one you need to be listening to. Yeah, you, you can wrestle the other uh, wrestle. You can to, wrestle the other I'm ones. all out of source today. No, nah, man, it's great. Hey, listen, let's talk about some wrestling. We had some deep conversations in the yeah, pre-show. Yeah, it was completely unexpected. <laughs> whenever I whenever I like have deep conversations in the pre-show, I was like, I probably didn't express my opinions that well. Yeah. <laughs> That's how I, how I always feel. Yeah. That probably was, wasn't how I meant to say a certain thing. We wake up, we wake up, and I, I wake up and I see Morgan Freeman's face looking at me with a sad headline, and I'm like, oh, come on, man. I just want to talk about wrestling. I know. Just be cool, man. Yeah, it'd just be nice if people were just cool. A2, Morgan Freeman, A2, sad. Anyways, uh, yeah, this is going in raw. It's a fantastic pro wrestling podcast. Um, you can get this here at YouTube, CastBox. We've mm -hmm. got a great partnership with them. Mm -hmm. Check them out. You know what? To make myself feel better today, I'm going to read a comment on CastBox. Oh, that's Box. a great idea. I'm going to do that because we get so much love, man. There's so much to be happy about in the world, and I just want to spread some of that happiness right now. You know what I mean? Yeah. Let's do what we can. Oh, man, 643 comments, oh, Larson. Oh, wow, man, we shot way past. Well, last, yesterday we were under 600, I thought. We shot past 600. Lewis Nicholson. It's oh, my perfect. birthday on the 25th. Guess I'll spend it watching Going In Raw. Uh, thanks, friendo. I'm going to say happy and thanks, happy birthday. friendo. Happy birthday. Man, so yesterday... It's funny because you recommended this uh, podcast uh, to me yesterday. Yeah. Um, this Chris Hayes one. Yeah. Uh, MSNBC guy. I'm not like a huge fan of MSNBC. I check it out, but, you know. Anyways, uh, he did have a really good episode about uh, mm -hmm. like what's happening in the Middle yeah, East. Yeah, fantastic. And all the players involved. Yes. It was just, it was informational. It wasn't any yeah, of that yeah, echo yeah, chamber yeah. stuff. It was just yeah. informational yeah, stuff. Yeah, it's, re it's really good. It's what I want these days. I just yeah. like information. You said you listened to the other one, the uh, conservative movement one too, right? I started to. Yeah, that's got a really interesting premise. Yeah, I started to. Um, and I want to finish it. But here's why I didn't finish it. Because I listened to the, to the uh, Middle East one while I was going for a jog. For some reason... My body uh, decided to not let my brain know that I had a lot of pee that really needed to be removed from my system, micturated. And so, like, when I was literally 20 minutes out. Did you have, did you, did you have there, to tinkle in a bush? I really should have. But there was because there's there's I think there's lots of opportunity out there. I yeah. just know myself, and it, because here's the thing: I live in a lot like my, my neck of the woods. My area is um, uh, there's a lot of wooded area. It's not like a it's not like track homes, it's not like home, home, home. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a lot of space between homes, a lot of land. Yeah, a lot of land. Like it used to be farmland, basically. Well, I mean, still, some it, of it it's, still it's, is. It's like kind of mi like mixed use, for right? Like yeah, a proper yeah. Term. I mean, it's not like house, house, house. You know, like apartment or sorry, office building, strip mm -hmm. mall. It's houses arranged typically like they would like your part of the street is arranged and I don't think they're track homes, but right, they're arranged yeah. as such. Yeah, There's sure. lots and they're yeah. evenly sized. I was on roughly. the other side of Hazel up because I really like when it, okay, where it's, yeah, that's a little more open. It's quiet out there and it's like open and there's all sorts of land. And so I had so many opportunities to like hop into like some some very wooded area and you do still it. I really want to do that. I though. still man, I can't like I should because who cares? But I just know my luck. I'm going to go out there. Yeah. And you're going to have, you know, and here's a the sheriff's thing. car drive right by. Right. You, yeah. And you're going to get nabbed. Yeah. They're going to grab me. And I don't know what the, I mean, they're usually actually like the cops out there. The few times I've had to deal with them, they're usually pretty cool. Like they're not jerks or anything. Um, so I probably get some guy who's like, oh, hey, here, let me put, let me put up a towel, you know, a sheet for you. So nobody sees your dingus. Yeah. Right. Or I'd get somebody who tases me while I'm peeing. I don't know. I could either way. I don't know. But anyways, I was out there like 20 minutes out, and so by the time I got back, you know, because I started like, you know, I tried to run, but running just makes it worse. So I just sped walked home. Did you do like speed a speed walk, the pee pee walk? I, it wasn't like it was bad, but I, I I didn't really change the way I walked because of right. it. 
Like that wasn't a set. There's a comedic pee pee walk. Yeah. But I, I wasn't looking for comedy relief. I was looking for a urination relief. Well, I mean, sometimes the pee pee walk is by necessity to to hold the urine inside you. Yeah. I don't Did you ever think consider just urinating that. yourself? <laughs> well, I thought that might have to happen. All right. I thought that might be no. if you run. Because here's the thing too. When I'm close to having relief, when I when I know it's in sight, it gets worse. I know. <laughs> like my body's I like, know. oh, you're good. Did you're you, almost did good. Did you actually All make right. it inside, or did you did you? Thank God like I didn't sneak d- around to your backyard. Thank God I didn't care about the safety of my family because I didn't bring a key, but I didn't lock the door either. <laughs> so I like ran right in. Somebody was in the family bathroom, and so I like sped past. And of course, my uh, my stupid dog tries to attack me. And I go, I go past her. I go into my my uh, the bathroom in my bedroom, and it was like it was forever. It was like an Iron Man match. It was so long. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. I don't know why I didn't know that in the, before I left. I might be in that condition by the time we're done with the show because usually I go and use the restroom before we start. Didn't do it today. Yeah, maybe that's why I'm a little off my game today, or at least feel like it. Yeah. It's probably all perception. It could be. Um, I don't know, man. Nonetheless, I'm, I might have to do the pee pee walk. <clears throat> going downstairs later in about a, 45 minutes. Well, we have a pea corner over there. You can just use that. It was a mess. Anyways, let's talk about 205 Live. Yeah. Let's do that. Uh, Drew Gulak kicked things off against Grand Metal. Go! Grand Metal League. This is a fun. There was three really fun matches. Yeah, there was, it was, there was some Wait, fun were matches. There only two yeah. matches? Oh, no, there's there three. three. There was three, but only one of them felt like it was. Well, I guess not. Was, the, uh, the, the Gulak. Grand Metalik match was of consequence because there's that feud going on between Gulak and all Lucha House Party. Plus, he got Kendrick and Gallagher involved. Yeah, I might see. Yeah, it might be the the sort of birth of a new faction if they're Could going be. with three man factions. Could be. Although I was kind of hoping that Noam Dar and uh, Drew Gulak yeah. would forge an alliance because they're both uh, uh, gifted and, and talented technical submission wrestlers. Mm-hmm. Could um, be. But I, whereas I don't really see uh, Jack Gallagher or Brian Kendrick in the same league in that regard as Drew Gulak. Now, TJP, after his match against Christopher Guy, said that he was the foremost technical wrestler in WWE because he's pretty good with the submission stuff. Imagine him, Gulak, and Noam Dar. Oh, yeah, that'd be good. I, like I think that. that'd be great. Yeah. I think the ship has already sailed on Gulak and, uh, and, and Gallagher and what's-his-face, Brian That's a Kendrick, though. Because then you know that's what they did last night. Yeah, I know. That's literally what we're talking about right now. No, I know. It's just, it's just a bummer. <laughs> I, mean, I know. I'm, I like. I like what I'm you're saying. Really though. huge into the Gallagher Kendrick team. <laughs> I like them individually. Just the team doesn't really work for me. Yeah, I don't know, man. I think you need to you need to open your mind a little bit, Cause just for the fact that you're stuck with them. No, I know, but you know, <laughs> it's the only group that seems just to... because WWE puts something in front of me doesn't mean I have to like it. No, that's true. I'm just saying, come to accept it because they're not going to bend to your will. Well, I was not. That's not what I'm asking. Oh, uh, okay. Um, I know that's not going to happen. See, I'm okay. I don't with have them. mind control powers. I'm okay with him. Is Brian Kendrick dresses up like a when his his like Gallagher dresses immaculately. Yeah, he's he's a snappy dresser. Yeah, Kendrick dress, dresses like I don't know. One he wears of the, his ring gear just with jeans instead of wrestling pants. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Basically, yeah. He still wears the same leather jacket and like a, a black t shirt. Yeah. He sort of looked like a, a a street thug from like the fifties. Street you know? tough. Tough, yeah, tough. A well, he would tough. have to have the white T-shirt and then the pack of smokes. Well, they didn't all wear that. And I his, imagine his some his of them. His hair is in no way like a street tough from the 50s. Well, I said he dresses like that. Oh, he had right. tight jeans, a black T-shirt, plain black T-shirt, oh. and a leather jacket. That's enough of a tough for me. But his jacket is more has like the studs and stuff on it, right? Yeah. It's, I don't know. I don't really see 50s. Tough. What do you see then? It's an amalgam of like current day just dude. <laughs> Plus, like a little bit of uh, mid '80s punk with the jacket and the studs and stuff on it. Yeah, because the jacket legitimately looks like it's from the mid '80s. But then there's like a little bit of dad thrown in. Yeah, yeah, because yeah. he's old. Yeah, he's older. He has like a he's a like our age almost. Yeah, yeah, he's been around forever. So it's an amalgam of various styles. <laughs> Alex C in chat says Kendrick had dad jeans on. I thought they were tighter than dad jeans. Yeah, they, I think they're like they were skinny jeans, man. Yeah, I don't remember. I should have made note of those. Good match, though. It's yeah, it was match. good. Yeah, Drew Gulak. Grand Metalik's always fun. Drew Gulak's a good storyteller. I mean, again, it's the high flyer versus the, the submission artist. Mm-hmm. You know, it's the story. It's, 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 and they told it well, so. Yeah, it was good. There you go. Kyle Young, 70s London punk tough. That's Kind good. of, yeah. I like that. That's Although I would, say, I would say more early, mid-80s. Yeah. Yeah, maybe. Punk tough. Um, anyways, Gulak won. With, with a gulak, the dragon sleeper. 
He puts that thing on. It, it's, I, I can oh, never man. get tired he, of him. The torque he that. puts on it and the way he well, bends. Like, oh, was, Grand Metal League's mad. Bends fast. people, arches their back. Yeah. That looks painful. I remember when uh, Ultimo Dragon used to do the Dragon Sleeper mm -hmm. in WCW. I don't remember him torquing people quite quite that much. Good stuff. Did we uh, did we talk about that? Uh, I, I had never seen this before. Um Jericho from uh, like an episode of Nitro back in the day. Mm -hmm. There's like a gift that was flying around. Mm -hmm. He when he tried to do um, lion salt and he almost Hayabusa himself, but he was fighting Mr. Perfect and he was on the ground, knew what was happening, put his knees up and Jericho just surfboard off him. And you could see the look on Jericho's face and he said, oh my God. wow, like totally knowing what just wow, happened. I missed that. We'll have to look at it after the show because you'd get a kick out of it. Mr. Perfect was a pro. <laughs> he was the best, man. Maybe that's when Jericho started holding on to the ropes doing the line Well, song. he did. It just, oh, he, no, right. he, he grabbed the ropes. I just, I don't know what happened. He, but he grabbed the ropes. There's nothing. I don't think he did anything wrong there. I don't know. Maybe the, the rope was a little loose or something. Yeah, that could be. Yeah. So you can get enough spring off. Yeah. It. That's crazy. That could be. Ooh, boy. Yeah, that's got to be a, a, a frightening move to yeah. get the least bit wrong. Like hate, that one time Alistair Block had the takeover. I hate when he does it. he put his hands down. I hate when he does it, dude. Usually he doesn't. He never I grabs know. a rope. I can't stand that. It bubs. Because you know what's going to... Man. That's the one thing that I, I, I'm fine talking about endlessly in hopes that it never comes to pass. And then when he retires, I'll, I'll say mission accomplished. Anyways, uh, Buddy Murphy video package. Um, yeah. Where they were talking about him cutting weight. All that kind of stuff. Yeah, I kind of, I, I feel like they should have gone with him as like stress eater. That's the reason I don't make weight when I do, because I'm a stress eater. Oh, Nick G says Jericho talked about that on his podcast and Mr. Perfect saved his life. That's why, that's why it was floating out there because he talked about it on his podcast. That's right. Oof. Yeah. Oof. -da. Seriously, man. Oof. <laughs> that look on his face afterwards. I'll never forget. Anyways. Uh, yeah. Good Buddy Murphy video package. Oh, best kept secret. No longer. Anyways, next up, uh, TJP versus Christopher Job Job. Christopher the guy. Christopher guy. Christopher hey guy. Um, this is a fun match. Yeah. And anytime TJP starts twisting people in, in pretzels, essentially, it's fun to watch. I love jobber matches. Yeah. They're fun. Especially jobber matches where the <clears throat> enhancement talent gets a few licks in. When they know what they're doing, too. When they know yeah, how this, to sell yeah, this good. this guy was good. He was good. He was legitimately good. He got an opportunity to get a little offense in because TJP was getting a little arrogant. Hubris. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Which is the story now. Hubris. Mm -hmm. Hubris. Hubris. Yeah. So afterwards, he gave an interview. He won well, with, he the, won de with well, the detonation yeah. kick. Yeah. Yeah. Christopher Guy did not go over. Uh, he gave an interview afterwards uh, where he said, um, I am best. Uh, not only was I the first cruiserweight champion, I was, was the, best. the best cruiserweight champion. Well, no, because then you'd still be cruiserweight Neville champion. Neville was best cruiserweight champion. That is true, Neville. Um, and he said, uh, I'm best technical wrestler. I am best. Mm -hmm. So that's his thing right now. He's best. Uh, well, that's what his, his pants say. is cruiser great. Cruiser great. Thanks, Brendo. Uh, next up, we had a Cedric Alexander interview. It was like a sit-down interview thing. Yeah. I'm not huge on these things. No. And it's not the best way to give a Cedric Alexander. No, and he, they still haven't really or he hasn't developed any sort of character beyond good guy. Yeah, no, not really. There needs to be some depth going on here. Yeah. Because otherwise it just seems like he's reciting lines. Yeah, I know. Cuz he is. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's so there's no performance involved since there's no it, the 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 performance isn't based in any sort of character. Mhm. Mm it's I imagine it's like here Cedric, here's your lines for your interview tonight. Thank you. We're going live in 3 minutes. I know. Sure. Memorize these. All right. Yeah. And then when the red light's on the camera and after Vic asks you a question, you will recite these lines. <laughs> that's probably the direction that's going right. on. Yeah, there. exactly. And he probably says, all right, well, all right, that's okay. fine. Sounds good. Am I going to fight anytime soon? I know. They, so did, do, they did do this like little uh, video package showcasing a lot of tweets talking about Cedric oh, and Mustafa yeah, Ali. Yeah, yeah. Their matches in Europe, yeah. Tearing it down in the European house you shows. You see the, the, the injury that Mustafa Ali suffered during one of the matches? No, get a huge gash in his oh, head. Oh, I did. I, I saw like yeah. seven or eight staples. Yeah, put in. I saw the. I saw the stitches crazy. afterwards. Yeah, it was pretty nasty. Nothing will ever be. Look, man, I don't care how many stitches you get. If you don't get as many as Jordan Devlin got on the back of his oh, head, man. it's kind of like nothing to me. They pretty much had to staple his whole back of his head <laughs> back together. Had to like find something to put his skull it back was in like place. From here to up here, that was so brutal. It was a nasty gash. <laughs> Anyways, he'll be in the. I think he's in the United Kingdom tournament coming up next month. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 
Uh, let's see here. Uh, Hideo Itami versus Akira Tozawa. They had their... You think these are a blow-off? They got to have a couple more matches, right? This is super good, though. This is a freaking hell of a match. Yeah, it was really good. Like, this could be the blow-off, but why would it be? They need to do a couple more. Escalate things a little bit. Akira needs to pick up a win, and they can have a rubber match. Mm -hmm. Maybe a couple more after that, because yeah. it's fantastic. Yeah. Very physical match. Long match. Super brutal. I like that Hideo Itami, he demands respect yet gives respect to no one. Yeah. That's his character, and yeah. it's interesting. Yeah, it was, preceded, it was preceded by an Akira Tozawa interview where not, no more jokey, no more acting like you're Vince McMahon or GM of 205 Live, no more saying you're fired. He just said, uh, you know, I liked him. If he had a problem being a partner with me, he should have said something. But you know what? He might not have liked me, but now that I don't like him, he's got a real problem, something like that. Then he stomped off. Um. Unfortunately for him, though, Hideo Itami did pick up the win with the finisher, but it was after a brutal match. Yeah, the, they and, went all and, over the place. And Tozawa, <clears throat> kind of the, one of the stories of the match was Tozawa in position to hit his finisher and unable to do so. He Three attempts and trying to hit that top rope senton. Yeah. Couldn't do it. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so uh, Hideo Itami picked up the win in the main event against Akira Tozawa again. I really want this to keep on going. Because they gave it really a ton of time. It was a really long match. Like I know. Some minutes. Yeah, it was a long match. All the bell, like all the, I don't know. Are they gonna? Are they still doing stuff with them at like pay per views with the cruiserweight title? When's the last time they did main? No, they did uh, one of the greatest, greatest rumble. rumble. That's the last time it was defended. It wasn't defended at Backlash. Backlash, it wasn't. That's right. We'll see it about Money in the Bank. Yeah. They should have Money in the Bank. Yeah, you think so, right? Yeah. Anyways. Uh, NXT, another fun episode. Um, I think I'm, I, I hate to say this, but I think I'm, I, I'm kind of getting over the Johnny Gargano Ciampa thing. I think it was a bit of a misstep to have Gargano insinuate he was going to retire yeah. and then do it at the behest of Candace. Yeah. That was a mistake. <laughs> yeah. Especially if you know anything about Candace's career. Right. Like yes. she literally, like one of, I have a shirt of hers on the back. Yeah. that says Candace LeRae is tougher than you. Yeah. So I don't really see her going to her husband and saying, you need to hang him up. I know. I just don't see that happening. I have a shirt with her with, with it's got her, a blood mask. Yeah. Man, she's, she is super tough. Mm -hmm. She probably is tougher than you. Oh yeah. Everybody. So yeah, I don't know. I just, I, there's so, I just feel like there's been too many segments where they're standing in the ring, talking, she looks concerned, Ciampa shows up, and how many times do we have to see him do this? I know. I'm just kind of over it. What I want to see is Candice LeRae beat the heck of Tommaso Ciampa. You, and you, that's yes! what I want to see. No, I know. I agree completely. That's, 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 that's the way to take this, take this feud up to a different level. Look, man, if Zelina Vega can drop Hoonan Canranas on people, I know. Candice LeRae can do something. Yeah. She can do something. Yeah. Other than um, to slap him. Other than slap him and just like run away and find refs, because that's what she did last night. I don't know, man. I'm kind of, look. It's going to be a great match. They're they're, they're I'm assuming they're going to do another match at, mm -hmm. at the next takeover. Yeah, I think so. Um, but uh, but yeah, it was kind of silly because he's like, yeah, I'm going to retire, and then like he like says, no, I'm not going to retire. Well, the crowd starts saying, you know, don't retire, and then he changes his mind. Or Candace is like, no, Johnny, think about what our future. What is commonly known to be the number one uh, uh, feature of a successful marriage? Communication. Yeah. Why would he have changed his mind without consulting his wife out there in the middle of the ring just because the crowd is chanting, we love Johnny or whatever they were chanting. Yeah, yeah. Please don't go. Yeah. I don't know. Well, the whole premise... Like him coming out in the neck brace and is like, yep, sorry, got to hang him up. It's taking too much a toll on me and my family. Yeah. Is a flawed pr premise to begin with <laughs> for the whole segment. Right, exactly. His yeah. name is Johnny Wrestling. Yeah. He's not going to be Johnny Barista. <laughs> Johnny Target. <laughs> yeah. You know? Yeah, man. He, it, it, you, he walks out there saying, yeah. Oh, it's he's so like dog faced, you know? And then, Ooh. like, we're really supposed to believe, all right. Goodbye, Johnny. Sad to see you go. I know, and he, okay, this, it's not in the least bit plausible. Here was my here was my thing. Like before all this, was he went out there to challenge? Th this is kind of one of the problems with NXT. When you know full on, then they're they're not going to have a real NXT championship match on NXT NXT TV. 
you absolutely know how that finish is going to turn out. You already know. And that's one of the things that NXT does. They have really good matches Mm -hmm. and things can be, you know, unpredictable. Mm -hmm. They've just got into this. Like last night when Lacey Evans went over Kyrie Sane, that was unpredictable. I really liked that. That was cool. Yeah, I wasn't expecting that at all. Me neither. Um, That was great. Um, Let me ask you this. Kyrie Sane, was she trying to, uh, walking out the ring, was that lose face or was that I'm mad face? Because I can interpret it either way. I don't. You know, I didn't pay enough attention to her entrance because I didn't figure that she was going to lose. So yeah. I, I honestly didn't. That wasn't even in my head. Yeah, I, had the, I saw on Twitter that she did lose. So I saw her. Come OK, out, yeah. And I was like, I don't know if she's just trying to. This is like she just found out she was losing. She's like, what? Yeah. Or, or if she was trying to come off as angry about what had happened previously. Yeah. I don't know. But I just I, I think so. When he when he challenged, I really liked when he said, hey, Almas. You know, we'll we'll do a you know if I lose, I'll I'll leave. Mm-hmm. I thought that that should have been through. Like he should have been gone through an additional takeover. Yeah, because was it even a week before he attacked Champa? It was again? a couple. Something was it? Yeah, just barely, it was pretty, it was hardly it was pretty nothing. quick. Yeah, it was at the next taping. Yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah, it was the next round of taping. So I don't know, man. I just feel like because of the way NXT is structured. They haven't. I don't. I just. I don't know. I don't, I don't feel. I don't feel a whole lot for this, especially because look, it's Candice LeRae. I should be really excited that she's here, but she's always just concerned wife for her mm-hmm. husband, mm-hmm. and it feels like a waste of her talent. She can be doing so much more. I know, and especially even within this uh, this feud itself. Yeah, like you said, attacking Champa. Yeah, we know what her pedigree is. We or yes. we know where she's been. We know where her history yes. is. Yes. Anyways, uh, things kicked off with. Heavy Machinery versus TM61. Um, I really like TM61. Oh, go ahead. Sorry. Sorry. Heavy Machinery was wearing the uh, red and black gear like I suggested. Okay, yeah. Remind me. Because okay. I said if you change their names. Well, I said, I said red and like really dark gray. Because okay. you have red, either red meat or barbecue sauce <laughs> for the steak. Okay. And then oh, dark man. gray for yeah. the weights. Okay. And then they came out this weekend similarly th- Oh wow! Gear. Because no, somebody somebody on Twitter said, "Yeah, yeah." They came out. They they're wearing it. And I was like, "What conversation do we have about that?" Because I remember we had one. Okay, yeah. that's good. I like that. Because I looked and I was like, "Well, they're not wearing like you know Sunday barbecue clothes." Yeah. So that was the my, color my suggestion. The color was out. scheme is what I suggested. Okay. Time. Well, well done. Well done. Um, anyways, they took on uh, TM61. Um, I love TM61. Yes. I don't love Heavy Machinery, man. They're just too. There was one part where literally Otis did some maneuver where he ended up standing tall and he looked right into the camera with this knowing he didn't wink. He didn't go that far. I don't like that. Mm. I just it's too dude. It's too cartoony. The, the, I feel like heavy machinery is not their gimmicks, not streamlined. Like yeah. if it was just strictly, hey, we're like construction workers. At least <laughs> that makes sense. Right. But they're. Like happy fun guys. They're happy fun guys. Who are somehow inspired by heavy machinery or you, construction you, you stuff. You got to let go of the construction stuff, man. I, I, how, <laughs> I mean, like that's their song is like hammers hitting anvils and stuff, <laughs> I know, man. I know, but you got to let go of it. And their stuff, their gear is still fashioned after like road signs. Yeah. I'm not getting hung up on anything. <laughs> I'm reacting to what's being shown to me on television. Right? All right. Okay. So all right. Give me a break, Steve. I'm just saying, like, beyond beyond the most basic of aesthetics. You're right. But that's what I'm saying. If it was strictly, hey, we used to be construction workers. Now we're wrestlers. Whatever. Come out in hard hat. I'm just saying. At least that's streamlined. That makes sense. Right. But there's a little bit of this. Right. There's the stakes and weights thing. Yeah. There's Otis okay. doing the worm. Yeah. Oh man! Then he did the. Oh, he's done that before. I know. But There's I think just I blocked it too many memory. little things, and it's all over the place. They need to streamline it. Either it's Otis likes to do the worm, yeah, or it's stakes and weights, or we're construction work, uh, right. construction aficionados or enthusiasts. All right, pick one. All right, go with that one. Don't try to incorporate them all. You have convinced me. You have convinced me. All right, <laughs> I agree with you. Oh, man. Anyways, uh, they had the upper hand for a lot of this match. Uh, TM61. See, Kevin Jenkins says, look, Steve, heavy machinery are just a couple of construction workers who like to barbecue work out. But there's more to it than that. Yeah. yeah. They like to joke around. They like to have fun. Which, of course, could be incorporated into the barbecue. But where does the worm fit into all this? And then Otis does the spinning thing, which bugs me, too. I don't, I don't like any of it, man. Uh, here's the thing. <clears throat> like, I think if they streamlined their gimmick and their characters, it could work. 
No, it's too much. No, here, here's the, here's it's the problem. It's just too much right now. This doesn't work. This doesn't work. And this doesn't work. None of it. I can bring out the whiteboard and show you. You get the the construction workers. I don't like that. You get the comedy stuff. I don't really like that. And then you get because I don't like their brand of comedy. It's too corny. And then you get uh, the the barbie the steaks and wakes barbecue stuff. I don't like that either. I don't really. Well, no, I do like the barbecue stuff. Yes. Say, but as wrestlers coming out as barbecuers, I like on second thought, I'm not huge on it. I can't, it's like a whole it's, perfect it's, storm it's of a crap. limited gimmick. But here's the thing is they're not dedicating enough effort to developing, developing any of those. Yeah, I know. So yeah. one of them in theory could work <clears throat> in theory, mm-hmm. but they're not allowing the either creative isn't allowed to explore any of those avenues or heavy machinery isn't exploring any of those avenues. Yeah. Therefore, none of them are going to work. Yeah. No, I'm with you on that one. I know. Anyways, TM61 got the roll up win. No, yeah, he got the roll up win. He had his uh, feet on the ropes. Miller, what's his first yeah, name? Yeah, Nick Miller. Nick Miller. There's Shane Thorne and Nick Miller. Correct. Anyways, yeah, yeah, and then they did the thing where Shane Thorne held the feet f- uh, firmly to the ropes again. Yeah, yeah. They got the 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 heel victory right there. The sneaky win. Yes. So good on them. <sighs> yeah, I like TM61 a lot. Me too. Uh, next up, we had a Bianca Belair video package. Yeah, they're teasing uh, some sort of a mini documentary. Well, next yeah, week. oh, that'll be good. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to that. I hope they show her interacting uh, with uh, her guy. Yeah, Montez uh, Ford. Montez Ford. I think that'd be great. Um, I really like Bianca Belair. She's fantastic. Same here. Uh, next up, there was an EC3 promo. <laughs> I still, dude, I'm, I'm still betting that the, he might even get called up after Money in the Bank. It's entirely possible. He's he, had like one match on <laughs> NXT TV. Well, he was, wasn't he talking about, he said, my trilogy of matches. Can you imagine what's oh, going to happen? Three then. Three, yeah, maybe. So maybe. there's a ladder match and two singles matches? I don't remember one, whatever. Yeah, I, I don't remember. I don't remember any of them, to be honest with you. I remember the ladder match, but I remember he, he didn't. He really beat Rock Rival Mendoza last week. Right. And then I think he had like a jobber match before that. Oh, all right. Forgot about that. So what do you say about this trilogy of matches? I've had my trilogy of matches. Now I'm out of here. <laughs> yeah, he said. He said I've had three matches. He said. He said you've seen what I've done in three matches. Imagine what I'm going to do in my fourth. More of the same. Yeah, probably win. <laughs> probably win. Just go to Maine, dude. You're you're made. He's SmackDown and Raw proof. Yeah. Even they can't mess up EC3. Well, they messed up Bobby Roode. His heel character seemed hard to mess up. EC, look. Here's the thing about EC3. Is he a heel? Is he a face? He's a one percenter. Is he a tweener? He's a one percenter. That's all you need, I guess. You can't mess that up. You know exactly what you get with EC3. Bobby Roode was explicitly a heel, and so you can turn him into something else. EC3 exists in the one percent area of all that. He is he is nothing and everything. He's a heel, face, tweener. He's all that. He's very I, orange. I understand your point of view, but... The he, only way they could change EC3 is if they kept him off the tanning bed and he had, like, normal-looking skin. Because his skin is orange is weird. What if they just made him, like, super middle class? <laughs> yeah, right. right. Or poverty-stricken. <laughs> I am the 99%. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, yeah, you could do that. They, literally the complete 180 on his gimmick. I mean, they could do that. But here's the thing. I think he would make that entertaining. Oh, he would. I think he'd make that super entertaining to live in a freaking three bedroom apartment with two roommates that I hate with no rent control <laughs> no rent control exactly so I know I hear the EC3 <laughs> is, like I'm, I'm, I'm in my mid 30s I've got a three bedroom apartment with two roommates <laughs> All right. no they should do the angle pulled ripped from the headlines 33 year old man lives with parents get or gets ordered by a judge to leave yeah God, I and now he has to go out into the world all first time all on his own. Right, Pay exactly. His own bills. That's good. No, I do. I think that he's. I think that EC3 is like made for main roster. Oh, like, he is. He should be gone. I'm actually kind of surprised that uh, he went to NXT at all. Poverty stricken three. <laughs> uh, oh man. Uh, anyways, great. Pro- I love EC3. He's great. Uh, next up, because he seems so happy too, because he's getting like his paychecks are actually showing up. I wonder if there's like a little bit of. PTSD from that, you oh, know, I don't like know. he like at two o'clock in the morning when he's supposed to get his direct deposit, he checks his phone, you know, he wakes up, sets his alarm, like, oh, and then he starts yeah, freaking out if it's not there by three. Yeah, you know, <laughs> at four o'clock he's calling the bank. Anyways, next up, Kyrie Sane versus Lacey Evans. Uh, you claim Kyrie had a lose face. That well, could totally no, no. be. Well, I, I, I was, I was, I was having a hard time interpreting whether it was a lose face or I'm angry face. Mm-hmm, yeah. 
because I could interpret it either way. <laughs> Kevin Jenkins, EC3 crisis of currency story. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. That's good. Uh, yeah, no, Lacey But Evans. then again, since I already knew she was going to lose, mm-hmm. so I saw it on Twitter, that might have altered my yeah, maybe. perception of, of, of her performance. Yeah. Lacey Evans, time traveler, able to see all the moves that Kyrie Sane was going to pull and then go back to her match and, and counter, counter them. for all of them because the finish saw uh, uh, Kyrie Sane. I think she does like a, not her top rope elbow, elbow, obviously, but like a top rope lariat. And in the midst of that, Lacey Evans hit her with the woman's right. Oh, I love that. And it's a great, what a great name too. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. Um, and then got the surprising win. Yeah. That was, you know, I love that man because it does nothing to hurt Kyrie Sane and it does everything for Lacey Evans. That's fantastic. Uh, next up, we had um, a backstage interview with Johnny Gargano where we saw the neck brace. And he just kind of said, well, yeah, you know. Was this when he was walking in the parking lot? I think so. Kathy, was it Kathy Kelly? Kathy Kelly, yeah. Yeah, I like her. She's good. Mm-hmm. And then they debuted a new interviewer, I think, with the, the Dakota Kai one. Maybe she's been there before. I think she replaced, uh, what's her face? Christy St. Saint- Cloud? Yeah. Oh, she's the ring announcer. She's been the ring announcer. Really? Yeah. Wow, okay. Cool. Um, yeah, Johnny Gargano walking up. Candace with that sad look on her face. Oh, I can't wait till they actually get away from this stuff. I just want to see her wrestle and, like, you and know. Kick butt. Kick ass, yeah. Anyways, Gargano, yeah. Oh, I got a neck brace. Uh, <laughs> next up, we had a very excited uh, Oni Lorkin and Danny Birch interview where they said, yes, we've got, because uh, the three of us, us and uh, Pete Dunn, mm-hmm. beat the Undisputed Era last week. We get a tag team title shot at TakeOver. And we're they're totally not going to get those titles. No. But the great thing about that is that after that. Da, 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 oh, da, 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 da. I love it. I love it. Da, da, da. Wow, look at that. I can do it on cue now. Awesome. Good for me. See, I just do that. Um, I do it slow. Another promo. They're on their playground. Yeah, man. Talking about... Uh, Oni Lorcan and Donnie Birch and Peter Dune. <laughs> Peter Dune. <laughs> they mispronounced all their names and it was hilarious. I love these guys. I love heel Roderick Strong. Yes. I was about to say a ton that. Kind of personality. It's, he's so corny. Yeah. He's so cheesy, but it fits it so fits perfectly. It fits so perfectly into Undisputed Era. It does. Everything about them really shouldn't work. I know. And it totally does. Do you know why it works? It's because they've are they've are they're already so accomplished. It's because, well, it's also because they all genuinely like each other. Yeah, I feel I like know. they're just doing stuff to try to make each other laugh. Yes. I know. Exactly. And it comes off as genuine. Exactly. That's why it works. I always, and I always love when Bobby Fish pipes up. That poor bastard. I know. <laughs> He's the best. Anyways, so that's great. So yeah, they poo-pooed the idea that Lorcan and Birch are going to win at takeover. So, yeah, it was great. Uh, next, Lars Sullivan versus Ricochet and Velveteen Dream. I thought this was the main event of the show. And so I was like, wow, they're going to get this match a half hour. Cool. Mm-hmm, yeah. And then it ended after about 12, 15 minutes. And I was like, did they get the, the length of the episode wrong? So we <laughs> – it's always possible. We uh, we talked on – we we talk on Matt Chat. So you're, you're – uh, I have to re-edit it you're, right you're now. figuring Matt Chat out. I have to re-edit it now that I've got – Audio that isn't messed up. We'll give you a little preview of Matt Chat. Somebody, mm. uh, I forget who it was, asked us a question. Who has a higher ceiling yeah. on main, Ricochet or Velveteen Dream? Yeah. I finally figured out who Velveteen Dream reminds me of and just how great and just why he's, I, I think, I personally think his ceiling might even be higher than Ricochet's. He reminds me of Brian Pillman. And I know Brian Pillman was never a, a main event guy, but I think the I think if Brian Pillman was around today and didn't have the injury problems he had, I think he could be. I think he had that weird charisma, that that X factor thing. Not talking about Xbox. That thing, unpredictability. That you know because they called him loose cannon. I kind of feel like that suited him so perfectly, especially in his like later, you like the last two years of his career, of his life. Um, Velveteen Dream, there's something so absolutely legitimate about his aura. Stop it, phone. About his aura that just comes off as so committed to the character that what he's doing. And on top of that, 
You have the, the fact that he's a physical specimen, that he's so young, that he's still learning. And my God, how much stuff he's gonna, if he's, is he going to learn if he has an extended feud with Ricochet? Oh, tons. You know, I mean, even if it's just one match, that's fine, whatever. But there's something about him that I think there is the potential. And I think here's the thing about, I don't think his, his gimmick is at all main roster proof because that's one thing that you, you and I both agree yes, on. Yes, in that, and that's, in, that's in my match primary concern. Is, yeah, is, is creative going to screw him up? It, it could be very likely. But I also think that he's the kind of guy who might be highly adaptable that kind of like Cody Rhodes, whatever they gave him, yeah, Cody he did. made. He, he, did, he did it to the max. He yeah. made gold out of it. Yeah. And I kind of feel like Patrick Clark is the same way. Whatever they give him, I think he's going to turn into gold. I have a feeling I could be wrong, but I get this vibe from him that is very, very unique. And and he in that manner, he kind of reminds me of Pillman okay. in his best way. Yeah, I mean, his ceiling is is off the charts so long as creative doesn't seriously bungle yeah. uh, matters for him. Yeah. I mean, the, you know. I mean, my premise in, in Matt Chat, if we're going to give the full tease, is that uh, Ricochet's in-ring gifts alone mm -hmm. will get him insanely over. Yeah. And if, you know, if he just ends up, um, based on what he's given on, in creative, being a capable promo guy, yeah. he's going to go far no, because he he's can, so good in the ring. Yeah, no, he could look. He can totally be another Seth Rollins. Mm -hmm. Abs mm -hmm. Absolutely. I look at Velveteen Dream, though, man, and that sweet something. And it could be he could just be a cult star. Yeah. You know, he, that, that might mean his ceiling isn't going to be as high as, like, Universal Champion. Absolutely. But, man, there is something absolutely special about that guy. And the crowd freaking clues into it. Yeah. So, and I I had literally throughout this entire, until until the swerve happened, I I just, I realized halfway through, I've had a smile on my face this entire match. Oh, it was a fun match. Because he comes out, and the interaction between Velveteen Dream and Ricochet is fantastic because they seem to be on the same page. Yeah, they do a fist bump before the match starts. Yeah, they're tagging in and out, trying to trying to chop down Lars Sullivan. And they're communicating a lot. They're like talking strategy during the match. Exactly. But every time they chop him down a little bit, Lars Sullivan is able to counter with a power move. Mm -hmm. That tags another guy in. Mm -hmm. He chops him down a little bit, gets hit with a power move, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, until... And then they start some tandem work. Yeah. Then they start like, you know, tag, you know, both guys in this ring at the same yeah, time. Yeah, yeah. Um, so and then at one point, that. right before Velveteen Dream turns on Ricochet, mm -hmm. Ricochet tags himself in. Mm -hmm. Apparently, the Velveteen Dream has a problem with it because they managed to knock down Lars Sullivan. And then Velveteen Dream gives uh, Ricochet a Death Valley driver. Out of nowhere. It was Out of nowhere. It was so beautiful. And then leaves. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then uh, Ricochet eats a freak accident and the pin. Lars goes over. So apparently, I don't know if this is officially a number one contenders match or they framed it as if it would uh, give Lars a good case to be number one contender. Well, Alistair Black is showing up next week. Mm -hmm. They advertise that as well. We should well. get some clarity in the situation. Pretty sure we probably will. Yeah. Anyways. Um, so, no. And I, I thought that was the end of the episode. I was like, okay, cool, fun. But there's more to it. I didn't know. I forgot that we were going to get a Johnny Gargano promo. Well, he was in the parking lot, so I figured he'd do something. But before yeah. that, before we got to that, we had a Dakota Kai interview. Because she's going to take on Shayna Baszler, I think, next week for the NXT title. Yeah. NXT Women's title. She has quickly become my most annoying wrestler. Really? Yeah. Oh, one thing I forgot to mention with 205 Live. I'm thinking of annoying wrestlers, and so I, I thought about Kalisto. But then how great was the, the I love the Lucha House Party oh, going fantastic. all in on the party aspect of things. See, yeah. Yeah. they take the one thing, they the house party. They focus on that. They focus on that. Develop that, and good things happen. Yes, absolutely. Now, if they would do that with heavy machinery, just choose one. Mm -hmm. Do they like to lift weight and eat? Lift weights and eat red meat? Yeah. Do they like jackhammers? Yeah, right. Do they, are they just like fun guys? Yeah. Choose one. Go yeah. with that. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> no, uh, yeah. Uh, I love the little... little yeah, the noisemakers also. The noisemakers. I like they, they got those in the Titan Tron too. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It was awesome. Anyways, uh, getting back to NXT. Uh, yeah, Dakota Kai. You know, oh, I'm so happy I, I'm here. And I'm so... I, I've always wanted to be... You know, NXT Women's Champion. Oh, I loved it. Even before I got here, I loved NXT. And then the interviewer says, but you're taking on Shayna Baszler. Oh, no, it's making me so mad. Oh, it's so annoying. But see, by the time the uh, Shayna Baszler okay. walked in the frame and was, like, talking trash. Yeah. And it seemed like Dakota Kai was finally... A little bit. Standing up well, for yeah, herself. Well, yeah, by the time she left the segment, she, she was like, man, my phone's blowing up. She was like, you she know... She was standing up for herself. Standing up for herself a little bit. She's like... 
But the funny thing is she said it so under her breath because Shayna Baszler was like, what? You're not going to do anything. What are you going to do? And then Dakota Kai says, we'll see about that. <laughs> and then walks away and Shayna was like, uh-oh, she's growing a sack. Not good. Not good for me. <laughs> Anyways, that'll be, good. that'll be a good match. Like, I like Dakota Kai. She's a great, she's a really, really good wrestler. Yeah. She's fun to watch. Yeah. Um, I'm just not, I'm just not, she's a bully. Oh, she's a bully. I don't like bully. I don't like huge on that. But it makes for entertaining TV. So yeah. Whatever. Yeah. Uh, next up, we had Johnny Gargano. We kind of already talked about this. Yeah. He hits the ring with Candice, uh, and he says, "You know, yeah, we're not sure if it's worth it anymore." You know, and the crowd's it. chance. Yes, as in yes, it is worth it. Mm-hmm. And so he rips off the neck brace. Mm-hmm. Socks to Candice. Candice says, "No, think about her future." Oh man! And then I'm, he calls out Tommaso Ciampa. Yeah. Uh, Ciampa comes out, says once again the situation where. Little Johnny mm-hmm. listening to his wife. Yeah. It's just the, the, the framing thought, of all this is I bad. thought there would be some little extra stank on it with Ciampa. Some extra little thing, you know, like when Biff said, or no, it wasn't Biff. It was Flea who said, what's wrong, McFly, you chicken? Yeah. Or Biff said, what's wrong, McFly, you yellow? <laughs> that was not the third one, huh? I don't know. I think so, yeah. I think yeah. so, yeah. <laughs> Anyways, um, but there was there wasn't. I thought he was gonna say something about Candace. Like, hey, Johnny, you know, I put a camera in the bathroom when we all live together. Whoa, you know. Yeah, that's too far. That is too far. <laughs> Instead, he just questioned Johnny's manhood for the umpteenth time. I know, I know. So, anyways, I don't know. I'm just tired of look. Johnny Johnny wrestling is one of the best wrestlers yeah. in the company. He's not the greatest like personality guy though. He's kind of dull. And it kind of makes me just think, why didn't Candace like go after Ciampa instead of Gargano? You know, he's manly. He's got all that vascularity. Yeah, he's got a nice beard. He's got a great beard. He's fantastic. Yeah. She should go with him. (laughs) (laughs) Um, So you essentially want Ciampa to turn into Scott Steiner. No. No? Okay. No. No, I want it to be no, because he had like... Well, that's that's my mind when you said that. I was like, in my mind, I was picturing Ciampa saying... Candace, we know it's like to be with the real man. Well, yeah, okay. I want him to be more like um, Clubber Lang in that all respect right, because right, he said right. essentially the same thing. Gotcha. Um, That's what kind of what Bob Rude was doing with the Roderick Strong story. Yeah, I much too. prefer that way. Yeah, Steiner was creepy with. Oh it. God, yes, he was super creepy. He was with really it. creepy with. It. Yeah, uh, I don't want Champa to be quite. I want I want Candace to be like. I can be a better team because a marriage is a team. That's true. I can be a good team with him because he's alpha. Anyways, anyway, so uh, Gargano runs back towards the ring because he and, and he, the ref separate him and from Champa. So the, yeah. he and Candice are at top of the ramp. <clears throat> Champa insults his manhood. Um, Johnny runs up the ramp, jumps on the apron. Champa pushes him off right into Candice. Candice mm-hmm. hits the bottom of the ramp. Yeah, she takes a pretty nasty spill. Yeah, and they all think she's dead. Yeah, but this is Candice LeRae. Yeah, I know. There's multiple T-shirts of her busted open. Yeah, I have one. I know. That's great. I. I've seen that PWG match against the Young Bucks yeah. in the world's cutest I've, tag team. I've seen her take some nasty bumps at the hands of Trent. Yeah. <laughs> you know? At the hands of Trent. Yeah. So, yeah, she's tougher than this. Yeah. But they were all freaking out. Um, she I should have just, like, got up and went in there and just started wailing away el- elbows on Chompa's I face. I know, exactly. That would be great. Come away with, a, again, a, a, a crimson mask. Um but they're all freaking out. Oh my God! Somebody get help! Somebody! And there, are, there are people out there helping. There's a guy with a giant uh, fanny pack mm-hmm. filled with great medical supplies. I imagine mm-hmm. that's out there to help. Um, and uh, and then Nigel McGuinness even comes over. Mm-hmm. He was concerned. Mm-hmm. So they're really, really, yeah. But it's kind of cheesy. You want to answer some questions? Uh, yeah, but first I want to mention this. Oh, Our friend mail too, Patrick Sparks was in attendance. At 205 Live, I meant to do this at the head of the show during the during when we were talking about this match. Well, he's on SmackDown, too. We gave him a shout-out on the SmackDown. Episode. Yeah, but he actually had a picture of the sign. Look at that. There it is. There it is. Thank you, Patrick Sparks. Clearly says, going in raw. And that's his little hand right there. And there's some bees buzzing around it. He's the bee man. He is the bee man. All right, we got some mail here. You want to read the letter? To Stephen Larson. I like when people's handwriting looks like uh, the Zodiac Killer. <laughs> Look at that. kind of does, doesn't it? It's great. Uh, let's see here. Long-time listener, now for about three years. 
I love listening to live streams as it makes pay-per-views more fun and entertaining and listen to podcasts whilst walking my dog on one of uh, your live streams. I constantly ask about your talent and Steve's Maurice accent. It's his favorite one. Um, wait, ask about your, no, you, oh, UK talent, oh. not your talent. It looks like a shorthand for your. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay, for you, oh, okay, yeah. But during one of these, I brought up Lana Austin, uh, who has the best stunner in wrestling currently. She uses a Destino stunner Ooh. during her matches, and as you both are fans of cutters, thought that could be added to your list of cutters. But back to point, uh, I thought I would send you some 8x10 signed by the woman herself. Uh, keep up the good work. Hearty handshake and a too sweet. Your number one, Mark Adam Nuttall. Thank you, Adam. Thank you very much. That's fantastic. That's cool. We're going to put at least one of these up on the wall. We're figuring out how to yeah. doll up the set. I know we're going to like do We're going to do something. We're trying to figure out the mechanics of how to do it best, we're, though. Yeah, we want to make it more but better. Thank you very much. That's cool. Yeah. No, it's awesome. That's really great. I need to check out. I keep on meaning to check because I've heard from multiple people that she's great, um, Lana Austin. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I'm going to check some of her stuff out. Question time. Question time, Al. Mr. Sinister, how can certain wrestlers avoid going to 205 Live like Ciampa, Gargano, Adam Cole, Bebe without gaining weight? I think they already bill Adam Cole at more than 205. Mm -hmm. I think it's like yeah, 215 or something like 210. 210, 210 something like that, something yeah. Like that. yeah. So he should be fine. Yeah, here's the thing. I don't think the wrestlers, sadly enough, have a choice. No, I don't think they do either. They don't have a choice. So even if they gain weight... Vince will be like, well, I don't care that you're too. Then they'll do a, a Buddy Murphy thing. Right. Do you really think Buddy Murphy weighs 205 pounds? That dude jacked. Yeah, he's massive. You know how many pounds he is? Jacked number of pounds. Yeah. So if if Triple H or Vince says, hey, uh, Johnny, we're going to put you on 205 Live. We need you on the, the 205 Live. We need you on the Cruiser Show. Because I think, uh, what? Well, on, at least on Wikipedia, like the weight difference between Finn Balor and Johnny Gargano is a matter of like five pounds. Mm -hmm. But Finn Balor looks like he's two inches taller mm -hmm, yeah. and maybe has 10 pounds more muscle on him. Yeah. I mean, Finn Balor is built at like 190-something. What, uh, what is Almas? Isn't Almas like? They say he's 210. They say he's 210, yeah. I wonder if he actually is. He's like 5'9", though. You is, know. He, is he that short? I think he's that short, which would make Zelina Vega like 4'3", because when they're standing next to each other, she is short. Yeah. See, look, now the top of the corner. Yeah, 5'9", 209. Yeah. El Hmm. Next. Uh, fat bastard champ Alex Foster. What should Noam Dar do when he returns? Uh, join forces with Drew Gulak. I like all the jokes that people are making about him going to SmackDown. Welcome to SmackDown on Fox. <laughs> <laughs> <That's> good. <laughs> That's pretty funny. Uh, the cynic Jason King. Hey, friendos. Do you think Roderick Strong will ever get his initial into the Undisputed Era logo? Kind of difficult, man. Not a lot of not a lot. Then of I'll just room. say CFOs, and that's who does the music for WWE. Yeah. WWE. Um, oh, if not, do right. you think that the lack of an update to the existing merchandise foreshadows his being betrayed and kicked out of the group? No, I hope not. No, I think no. that's just an extensive investment they have to put forth to incorporate an S into the CFO logo. They will have to do something about the title situation, though. Because between now and Bobby Fish getting back, yeah, they'll have to do something about that. They'll freebird him, unless yeah, they might just do that and be goofy about it. You know, they'll do like you know rock paper scissors to determine who's going to be the yeah. other guy going yeah. out there. That'd be cool. <clears throat> or they'll have a race across the 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 playground apparatus yeah. they yeah. have. The monkey bars. The monkey bars. Bronze grappling hook. Go to the past and pick three WWE legends to wrestle on NXT today. Macho Man. Yeah, man. Macho oh, Man have... versus Velveteen Dream. Yeah. Oh man, it'd be great. Oh yeah. Three legends. Oh yeah. Who else? Oh, Shawn Michaels. Yeah. I take Ric Flair in his prime. Mm. That'd be good. That'd be good. Yeah. Some good storytelling. Yeah, man. Yeah. Absolutely. All good answers. Oh, RVD. RVD oh, that's a great a answer one. too. Yeah. Because somebody mentioned Jerry Lynn. That's a good one, too. 
That's great. Mr. Husband. I like that his name is Mr. Husband. Speaking of which, Mr. Husband has a question. Uh, who do you think has the highest ceiling on the main roster of any of the current NXT folk? I think it's Alistair Black. I think he's got the highest. I think he's got a universal champion right now. I want to go with Lars Sullivan. Really? Because they love their monsters. Yeah, they do. But even Braun hasn't gotten the universal championship Well, it's yet. because there's someone named Roman Reigns in the way. Yeah, I know, man. You send Lars to SmackDown? You tell me within a year he's not going to have the WWE title? Maybe. Maybe. I still think it's Aleister Black, a universal champion. Marvelous Marcus Tyler. Which segment would you rather see brought to WWE TV? Story time with Adam Cole. Or your husband isn't a real man with Tommaso Ciampa. <laughs> Wait, what's the question? Do you want to see story time with Adam Cole? Oh, a, and a segment? Yeah, a weekly or a regular segment. Story time with Adam Cole or your husband isn't a real man with Tommaso Ciampa. Well, that's the one. I want that one. I've been advocating this whole time. <laughs> I put cameras in your bathroom by <laughs> Tommaso Ciampa. <laughs> Got a toilet cam. Um, never understood the appeal of that because you, know, you hear you like hear about that stuff in the news, like creeps doing that. Yeah, it's disgusting. Like, why would anybody want to see the poo poo happen or the pee pee? I don't get it. It's gross. People are weird, man. Yeah, they are. Just be cool. It's not even a matter. It's like that's just weird. But yeah, just be cool. Just be cool. Um. Well, this could be interesting. I I I, I think Eric. The base hit King Blaha. Hey, friendos. Cast the crew from It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia using wrestlers from 205 Live and NXT. Don't forget to include Frank Reynolds. Yeah, so who's Danny DeVito? Raw oh, man. Hmm. God, I don't know. I don't know. There's a there's a Danny like Lars Sullivan. I'd like to see him as Danny DeVito. Yeah, because it'd be funny. Um, who's Mac? God, I don't know. I'm drawing a blank on all these right now. To be honest with you, I'm a fan. I like Always Sunny, but I'm not like such a fan. Yeah, I know that. Like, I know. I mean, I I know their personalities, but I'm just trying to. I don't know. I don't what about know. Lacey Evans as as D? Yeah, there you go. And then uh, no, man, it's got to be like uh, Billy K as D. Well, she's not in NXT or 205 Live anymore. Oh, yeah, that was the right. premise of the question. <clears throat> uh, who's, who's Glenn Howerton? I don't know. Velveteen Dream. All right. I don't know. What about uh, Charlie Day? Come on, let's just get through it. Okay, I don't know. No Amdar. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Perfect. Tommy Cat. Uh, how would you book EC3 from this point on? Main roster. He's, yeah, he says he would bring him in as surprise addition to the Money in the Bank. And then build the Cena wow. EC3 at WrestleMania. Wow. That'd be great. No, how about this? He comes in, money in the bank, and then build to EC3 Undertaker at WrestleMania. EC3 retires go. Undertaker. There you go. CM Punk finds it insulting. Is Candice LeRae's stock suffering from this Ciampa Gargano feud? It, it's, not, it's not helping her stock. I know. I, I think the, the largest issue is that they're trying to expect us <clears throat> The people who watch NXT, I feel like, for the most part, probably know at least a little bit of something about what Candice LeRae has done in the wrestling industry. Mm -hmm. And to expect us to just forget all that, put it to the side, yeah. to accept what we're being shown, no. Mm, I, I think know. that's a larger issue for me. It's like she's, she's been in matches with dudes and beat them. Yeah. You know, she's wrestled in tag team matches. She's gotten busted open. Yeah. She is tough. Yeah. She has shirts to say that. She Cody is tougher Rhodes than says you. she's one of the strongest people he's exactly. ever wrestled before. Exactly. Yeah. Where's my title? Says. Oh, oh I thought that was a question. <laughs> did, did you uh, did you uh, hear this rumor? What? And I have no idea the legitimacy of it or not. But he said, now that SmackDown Live will officially split off from Raw uh, and go to Fox, are we entering into an era where we might see the Big Five? being showed on network TV. Oh no. Between NBC, Fox, WrestleMania. Well, that's I read some rumor that WWE was shopping around their big four. Oh, to network television? Um to anybody who wants it. Well, that's interesting. But I don't I have no that might have been some crap on Facebook that has zero legitimacy. We'll have to look into it later on today. I have no idea. Um given how much money they get 
Or they, they've, they've yeah, gotten... Yeah, I mean, I guess if NBC is going to give them $30 million to air WrestleMania... I mean, they're, you know... That's more than they're going to make on the network front. They've got their price tag. Yeah. And I'm not sure they would lose that many network subscriptions if the big four left. I was I, I would keep it just for the fact that last night, after I got done watching 205 Live at midnight... I decided to watch some WCW Saturday yeah. Night. Well, here's the thing too: if you're, they're going to have WrestleMania on NBC, they're not going to have the pre-show. That's going to be right. the network. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I could, I could see that happening if the price tag is right. If yeah. the price tag is yeah. right, yeah, exactly. That was kind of the one of the interesting things about that podcast too, is listening to the Saudi Arabia stuff, because you know as it pertains to the WWE's deal, you know, oh the yeah, wheel started spinning there. I was like, oh wow, yeah. Um, the appropriately named Mark, Jonathan Coachman, gave his NXT endorsement to Heavy Machinery, power rank the rest of the underwhelming acts that would round out his top five. Um, yeah, freaking Coach. He said, those are my guys. Of course they would be. I don't know. Who else, who else do I think sucks? I'm pretty high on a lot of people. Yeah, I think heavy machinery is the only. He would have been like, "Who's that guy that TJP fought, Christopher Guy? That's my guy, <laughs> right there. That's who you'd like." Um, don't call me Lawler. Um, first time question asker, long time listener. This question is for Steve. You come into work and hear a loud sound coming from the office. The closer you walk, you realize it's Lex Luger, and he's screaming and yelling. Oh God! Once you get into the office, you are shocked to see. Lex coaching up an oiled up Ryback while he poses in front of a tied up Larson who is forced to watch. What do you do? What? That's a weird question. I'd freaking call the cops, man. No, both those guys are banned from this office. All right. It's Luger, Ryback, and Adam Mayhem all banned from Ad, the Adam office. Adam Mayhem's not banned from the office. None of them are allowed to be here. Adam Mayhem's not banned. And they have the you office. tied up? Yeah. Dude, it'd be. And forced to watch. It'd be Spanish Fly followed by Starship Pain to both of them. Before or after you untie me? Well, I need to get past them to untie you. So oh, I feel like right. those, or just super. Well, kick I feel like party. a double Spanish fly would achieve that. And then we could do dar- double starship paint on the both of them. There you go. Perfect. Um, the legendary Jason the Cabbie. If you could have one legendary sports announcer call a match, why would you choose Harry Carey calling a Stone Cold match? Oh, man. That'd be something else. It would be the other guy. It'd be, uh, what's his name? John Madden? No, no. The guy. Oh, that'd be great. No, the guy used to call uh, Howard Cosell. Oh, yeah. I mean, how it goes south. Wow, look at that stunner. What a great job. Or I just get one in like old-timey guys. Mm-hmm. I don't even know their names. Oh, man, look at that. I get the guy who called the uh, the freaking uh, Hindenburg going down. Oh, the, OD- oh, the, the, the humanity. humanity. about Orson Welles circa War Ooh. of the Worlds radio broadcast? Wow, look at that stunner. You see right there. Well, that's a beautiful stunner. He goes for the pin one, two. Oh, kick out. Yeah. Super kick. Captivating. Spanish fly. Oh, followed by Starship, Starship Pain. Pain. Captivating. <laughs> Captivating. <laughs> Anyways, that's it for show. Yes. We're good to go. That's it for show. Thanks for watching. Hilton. Get wake up. Hit our music. He didn't get it. He didn't get any splendid in his coffee today either. Well, we can get some go get some coffee after lunch because I'm gonna need some too. Cool. Anyways, that's it for show. Thanks so much for tuning in. We appreciate it. Uh, and until next time, we'll talk to you guys later. Goodbye. <laughs>